Hello and welcome. I'm David. This is painting for kids ages 5 to 8. We're going to be working with watercolors this whole class. Um, so you can follow along and purchase the materials yourself or you can go to our website mcrostyartcenter.org and you can uh, sign up for the class and then we'll get you a kit with all of your supplies. So what are the supplies that should be in your kit that we're going to need for the class? So first off, we need watercolor paper. This, uh, you should have about 14 sheets of watercolor paper. There's more paper included in the kit than you will need for the class, but that's so um, maybe, you know, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or maybe one of your siblings or something uh, could follow along with the class and paint with us as well. Or it could also be there for maybe you do a painting and you don't really like it very much and you just want to throw it away. It's okay to throw it away. Just throw it away. Try it again. That's what the other papers are for, for you to try it again, make a better painting the next time. So what else do we have? We have our paint, which comes in this package here. It's praying. The praying watercolors, I think, are the best uh, for a kit that are non-liquid, not in the tubes. I think for a kit, if the praying watercolors are the best, um, you should have this uh, row of colors, which is red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and black is the last one. And then you should have a refill kit as well in case... You know, you use up all of this paint, which maybe you will, maybe you won't. And you can always just pull this one out of here and then grab a new one and slide it in and just pop it in. So that's that. I'm using one that's a little bit used because there's nothing wrong with this paint. It's totally good still. Then you should also have your brushes. Some of the brushes have been used before, but they're still good they'll still work great. You should have a one inch big brush. You should have a brush which has a number six on it, which is our sable round brush. You should have the praying brush, which comes with the kit. And then you should have a tiny brush for doing detail work. The things that are not included in your kit that you will need is you will need a cup with some water in it. Um, you can't do watercolors without water. So you always want to get a cup with some water in it and try and use a cup that you will not drink out of. So find a cup that you know nobody ever uses that you can use for painting. Um, the main reason is because like you know you just don't want to get in a habit of using a cup that you drink out of. Because then you could be here like really intensely painting something and be like, oh I'm thirsty. I'd, oh, oh I shouldn't drink out of that. Trust me, it's happened. It's happened to me even. I'll be in my studio working and painting and da 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 da. Oh, I'm thirsty. Oh, I'm oh no, no, I shouldn't drink that. So just pick one that you don't drink out of so you don't get in the habit of drinking out of it. The last thing we'll need, and this is only for today, is you need something to draw with. Um, I like to use a crayon with watercolors because the crayons are made out of oil and then the water and oil don't mix. So the watercolors will not change what I draw with my crayon. But if you have to use a pencil or a pen, that's totally fine as well. Um, I would prefer to use a pencil over a pen. Some pens could smear and run with the water. But if that's all you have, then that's fine too. But if you have a crayon, use a crayon. So get out a sheet of paper and get your drawing tool and we're going to do a little drawing today. So I'll wait a second while you get something to draw with. Hmm. Or you could just pause the video, I guess. Okay, so what we're going to draw is just some basic shapes. Because today all we're doing is just getting used to our watercolors and how they work and um, how they blend and mix together. So I just want you to start off with a drawing and I don't want you to copy my drawing so I'm not showing you what I'm drawing. I want you to do it your own way. 
I'm just going to give you instructions and you do it your way. So first off, I want you to draw four squares and they can be as big as you want anywhere on the paper, four squares. That's what I want. So go ahead and draw four squares and they don't have to all be the same size. They can touch or overlap. That is fine. All I want to see are four squares. Now, I want you to draw three triangles. Three triangles. And don't think about it too much. Just kind of put them where you think they should go. However big you think they should be is totally fine. All right, now I want you to draw two circles. Two circles as big as you want, wherever you want on the paper. Last thing, we're gonna make four lines. The first line is gonna be a straight line. And I want it to go from one side of the paper to the other side of the paper. Can be from left to right or up and down, just one side of the paper to the other. Next, I want you to make a wavy line. So a wavy line goes like this, like a wave on the ocean. And it can be from top to bottom, well left to right. I just want you to make a wavy line that goes from one side to the other. Next, I want you to do a zigzag line. A zigzag line goes up and down and up and down and it's like a lot of triangles next to each other. And put that wherever you want on the paper from one side to the other. All right, the last line I want you to make is I want you to make a dashed line. So it should go do and then there'll be a space and then do and then space and do. So put that wherever you want, a dashed line. All right. Now, let's get to painting it. So this is my drawing. This is how it came out. Somehow I doubt yours looks like mine, but that's kind of the idea. Everyone is gonna do it differently. And there isn't a right or wrong way to do it. And I just want you to remember that as we go on painting, that there isn't a right or wrong way to do it. You might not like it, and that's okay. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. But yeah, so this is my beautiful painting. And what we're going to do now is we're going to paint it in. And each new shape is going to be a different color. I'm going to be like, well, I only have these colors. Well, there's other ways you can do it. So I'm going to let you pick whatever brush you want to use. I'm going to use the bigger sable brush for parts of it. And then I'm going to use probably this one for other parts. And I'll use this one for some of the bigger spots. But I want you to just play around with it today. Use whatever ones you want and kind of just get comfortable with it. One of the first things I like to do before painting though, is I like to get my brush wet and then I like to put a little drop of water in every color. And this just makes it so that my paint is basically ready to go whenever I wanna paint. So you see I'm just putting a little drop of water in each one. The thing to remember with watercolors is that they're activated by water and you always have to be dipping your brush in. All right, so I'm gonna start by painting something and I'm gonna paint this triangle right here. We're gonna make that blue. And of course, I dipped my brush in the water and then I dipped it in the paint and I just started painting. You can see that it doesn't move my crayon marks at all, which is great. And I just painted that in and it looks great. I love it, beautiful. 
So, what else can we do though? Well, what is this over here for? We have this top of the tray. It's not there just to keep your paint safe, which is one of the things it's for, but you can also use it to mix colors over there. So I'm gonna take this blue, keep dipping a little bit of water into it and bring it over here. And then let's see, I'm gonna mix it with some green because I want kind of a, like a, a ultramarine or an aqua color. So here you can see I'm just mixing it right on the top here. Now maybe I want some more blue in it. Now come over here. Ooh, I get a nice pretty color now. I like that. So I can take this color now and I can use that to color in a spot over here. And that looks pretty close to my crayon color. I really like that, that's pretty cool. Looks good. I love it. Now, if I want to wipe that off, I can just take a paper towel and just use a paper towel and just wipe it out. Or I could take it to the sink and I could just wipe it out with my hands. Whichever way you want to do it, just make sure to clean it up after you're done. You could even let that dry too because it's going to um, reactivate after you put some water on it. So you could let it dry or just leave it there. It's totally fine. All right, now what else can we do though with our paint? Well, let's start off with some yellow. And I'm gonna put some yellow, like maybe in this circle, I think. We'll put it over here, but I'm not gonna put it in the entire way. I'll show you why in a second. All right, so I'm gonna take that and then I'm gonna wash my brush out. You know, if you want your colors to stay pure on your paper, always wash your brush out and you can just swirl it around in the water like that. And now let's take some orange and let's mix it right on our paper. Ooh, look how cool that looks. We can mix it right on our paper and you can see how it spreads into the water that's already wet. Now you could leave it spread like that, or you could take another brush, which is already dry, and use that to kind of spread it together and smear it together and have it mix. I like to use a brush that's kind of dry for this part though, because it won't add more water and it won't spread more all over it. So you see how I use like a drier brush to mix that in there? And I can come back and be like, okay, I wanna put some more orange over here. I want it a little darker. There we go. If you want it a little darker too, you can just dip it back in the paint and then put it in. There we go. That looks pretty nice. All right, and wash both of the brushes out. There we go. Let's get to painting some of the rest of it. Now you can go in and you could paint a few of them just like a solid color, like this spot over here is just gonna be red. But I want you to pick out some shapes that are going to be mixed color, like this one here, like we did on our tray with our green and our blue. And then I want you to try and do some like this one with the orange and the yellow, where the color kind of changes gradually as you go across. So let's try that again. Let's try this one again. I think I wanna smooth this out a little bit. And if your brush is a little wet, you know, you can just put it right on your hands to dry it off. Or, you know, if you have a paper towel lying around, grab a paper towel, that works as well. But you can just use your fingers though, because the watercolor paint, even if you get a little paint on you, it washes right off in the sink with just some soap and water. So don't worry about that part. Maybe it needs to be a little wet though. After it's dry on your paper, you can also reactivate that paint on there by getting your brush wet without putting it into the paint. And just kind of reactivate that and get it to move a little more. So let's try it again and let's put another gradation like right here. I want it right there. 
What color should we use? I, I think I want, I want a purple that moves into red. So get your brush wet. You can always like do like you see I'm doing here. I'm kind of wiping it on the lip. You can kind of do that if your brush is too wet. So you don't want your brush to be too wet. It's kind of a tricky balance finding like where it's wet enough or where it's too wet. Now I like to go right to the edge and if I paint on the table, then it's, it's totally okay though because this wipes right off with just a little water. But you can always put down like a piece of paper or a newspaper or something underneath just to make sure you don't paint on your table. But this table I don't mind so much. And also, like I said, it wipes right off though. So I got some cool spots here. You see here though, I didn't let this red dry and I got too close to it. So that started mixing with my purple. I didn't really want it to happen over there, but it did because I, I wasn't patient enough to let that dry. But it's also not a big deal because if I let it dry now, I can always paint over it. So let's go over here with some purple to about, I don't know, maybe about here. We'll go to the triangle with the purple. And a little more. You can see like I'm always dipping it into the water. You always want to keep that brush wet. All right. I'm going to wash it out a little bit and let's get some red on the other side and then let's have it mix into each other. You can see it's kind of like a violet color where I mix it together. It's not exactly the same as the red, which turns out pretty cool. All right. Now you see, I don't want it to go any farther though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe or wash off my brush and then go back to the red and finish the spots over here before I get to where it's wet. Because I know once I get to that wet part where that wet paint is, it's going to mix together right away. You see how it mixed right away right there. But now we have a nice cool gradation that goes from one side to the other. Here it doesn't mix as well, so I'm going to go back over that a little bit. It's all how you want it though. Ooh, I like that. That looks pretty cool. So let's leave that for now and let's move on to another spot. Now this other spot I want to do, well, let's see, I want to do some orange. I'm going to start off with some orange and I'm going to put it right here. Remember to always go back and dip it in the water. Dip it back in the paint. If your paint is wet, if you've got like a little pool of water in your paint, you don't necessarily have to go back to your cup of water to get more on your brush. Now I've painted this in pretty well. I'm going to leave that for now. We're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this in a little bit. So let's move on to another spot. Um, sometimes your brush gets a little too wet. You can always wipe it off a little bit. You know, wipe it off and dry it off a little bit. But you need it, like I said, it, it's kind of a fine balance to find it right away. You know, you want it a little wet, but not too wet. You don't want it dripping. All right, I'm just gonna paint this shape in green with this brush. Now let's see. I got this I want to paint in so I've got to use a little smaller brush. So I'm going to go to this brush and we're going to paint that in blue. A little more water in there. You always want to have like a little pool of water in there. And take your time and just try and stay in the lines. But if you go over the lines it's not a big deal. You can always repaint it after it dries if it bothers you. If it doesn't bother you, then just leave it. 
The harder thing to repaint though is when you have a dark color going over a lighter color. Like our darker colors are from like the green to black, our lighter colors are yellow, orange, and red. That looks pretty good. Let me paint in another shape while I'm waiting for my orange to dry there. Let's go with some brown. We haven't put any brown in yet. Let's put some brown in right here. And then wipe that off. Make sure you always go back in and clean your brushes off. And you see there, I just kind of took some of that, I took some of that excess water and I just kind of wiped it off in my hands. It's totally fine now. now. Let's take some purple, and I think I want purple right here. All right, that orange is almost dry, but you can see there where it's still wet, it like soaked, it, I got too close. It soaked into my purple and it changed my purple. Sometimes it can be cool, sometimes not. You know, if you like it, just leave it. If you don't, then let it dry and change it. Or, if it's kind of wet like that now, I can take a little bit of paper towel and kind of dab it up with my paper towel. If you want to, but the paper towels aren't necessary. You can always just let it dry and paint it again. All right, let's try another mix. Let's mix some orange and some yellow. Let's make a real light color orange. And your yellow is always the weakest color. So you always wanna make sure you wash off your brush before you dip into the yellow because if let's say I'm using green and then I go in and dip into my yellow, it's going to change that yellow and it's going to make it all green. It's going to really change it too much. All right, there we go. Ooh, that's, that's a beautiful color. I like that a lot. Let's get some more water in there. I like that quite a bit. Let's put it right here. A nice light yellowish orange. I want you to mix in your tray at least three different colors. And I want you to try mixing the gradation at least three different times on your paper. And there's gonna be one other way to mix that I'm gonna show you as soon as my orange dries here. Your watercolors should dry within about five minutes. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer depending on how wet they are though. So I've got that color mixed, that's really nice. But I wanna mix a little more into it and let's put some brown in there too. Well, it kind of overtook it a little bit, but it's still pretty light. But I'm gonna wash that out, it got a little too dark. So I'm gonna wash this out and go back into my yellow. So I want it to be really more of like a tan color. There we go. Mix it up in there and let's put it right here. Nice, pretty tan color. That looks nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Now if you get little drips from your brushes, don't worry about those. You can always paint over that or just mix it into the other color. If it's a tiny little bit of color, it's really not gonna affect your painting too much. It's not gonna change the color that much. But if you don't want these little drips to happen though, you know, you gotta make sure that your brush is pretty, is not very wet, it's pretty dry. All right, I like that color quite a bit. Now I wanna get that out of there. So like I said, you can either take it to the sink and wash it out or just grab a paper towel or a napkin and just wipe that out. While it's still wet, you can wipe it out pretty easily. All right, I need to do one more gradation so let's do that, and I'm gonna put it over here. And you can always turn your paper around to make it easier too. 
There's no reason you can't. Let's use this brush over there. And what do I want to do for a gradation? I think I want to do green into yellow. So I'm going to start actually with the yellow. Because like I said, if I get green on my brush and I go back into that yellow, it's going to pollute that yellow. It's going to make it turn green. And I'll have to go. It's not the end of the world if that happens. So, But then you do have to go over to the sink and kind of take your brush, get it wet, and just kind of wipe out all of that color that's in your yellow or another color, but most, most of the time it happens to the yellow. So I keep going here, get some yellow down on the paper there. And now I'll wipe off my brush, wash out my brush, and go in and get some green. And I'll start with the green way over here. There we go. And we're starting to get into our yellow and I can start mixing it in with my yellow a little bit and get that nice gradation. Maybe I need a little more water to mix it. Even better. There we go. Nice. I'll go right almost to the edge, almost to the end, but not all the way. And got that nice and mixed. So I got a green, then a lighter green, and then a yellow. It looks pretty good going that way. All right. Now I can always take a dry brush and kind of smooth it out if I want. Take that drier brush and really smooth it out. Just go from the lighter color to the darker color though. You see how I smooth that out nice and maybe a little too much, but I'm going to leave it. Always wash your brushes out, though, after you get paint on them. Now, this orange is pretty much dry. So I want to show you something else you can do. So I've got a solid color painted down here. Now I want to mix into that solid color. I want a little bit of a darker orange, it's not dark enough for me. So I'm going to take some red, get some red on my brush, and I'm going to paint right on top of it. And if it's wet, if the paint is wet, it's going to be a little harder to do. But, because it'll, it'll run all over the place. But if it is just a little wet, like I've got here, they mix together and make another color. You see, it's not the same as this red. That's that pure red. This is like a darker, orangier red. Because I put the orange down first, and I put this on top of it. I want you to experiment with this, to put down different colors and put others on top of it. Let's do it one more time. This time, I'm going to go on top of my purple, and I'm going to put some, let's see, I'm going to put some, hmm, some, well, I've got red and purple, but I think I'm going to go with the red again, though, and see what happens there. Ooh, that's getting kind of a cool color. I like that. That's like a nice violet color. That came out really cool. I didn't know that was going to happen. That's cool. I want you to play around with it. The thing is, though, not all colors are going to mix well together. So let's see two colors that don't mix together really well. Let's go with red. We'll put that over here. And let's see a little more red. And let's pick green. So if I mix red and green together, they don't mix very well together. In fact, if you look here, it kind of comes out as kind of a grayish, kind of army green color, which, you know, if that's the color you want, that's fine, but I don't think that's a very pretty color. It's okay. But what happens when you mix complementary colors 
like red and green, or orange and blue, or yellow and purple, is you get what's called a neutral color, which their neutrals are more like brown and black. I think I'm gonna put this over here though too. I don't hate the color, but it's not as bright and vibrant as my other colors. Yeah, it's not great. I don't love it. I don't wanna put it all over. Now, if I really disliked it, I could let it dry and then paint another color on top of it and change it. It's not gonna make it bright as these other colors, but it's gonna change it and make it a little more lively. Now let's do, what do I have left to do? I have my three gradations, oh, I have two more layer or one more layered color that I have to do. So let's pick, let's pick black. And be like, well, black, you can't layer things on top of black. Well, you can actually. But we gotta put that down and let it dry first. Let's cover this all up with the black. Just go right, fill in that entire shape with the color. And we'll see what happens with our black. Now you can, you can paint in a lot of the shapes by just using the colors straight out of the pan, out of these pans here. Um, that's okay. I just want, I want you to do at least three gradations like this, three layered colors, like with the red and orange and the purple and red and the black and another color. And I want you to mix three colors in your pan over here, like this aquamarine color and that yellowish orange and that tan color. I really like that tan color. That came out really nice. But they don't all have to be that way. You, you could make them all that way, that's fine too. But it's okay to do, you know, a good amount of shapes just right out of the pan. And you see I'm doing a lot of blue. I really like blue. What you wanna try and avoid though is just don't put the same color next to each other. Like I've got this blue here, I'm not gonna put blue here too. I'm not gonna, I've got blue here, I'm not gonna put blue there. And if you did put two colors next to each other, it's okay, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, it's a little more energy if you don't have the colors right next to each other. Let's put some orange over here. That black is almost dry and we can layer something on top of it. Let's go with a little more orange over here. And uh, let's see, that black looks pretty dry, so I'm gonna go over that black, but I'm gonna go over that black with some red now. And let's see what happens. It's still pretty dark, and you gotta remember, I wanna always wash out my brush before putting it back into that red, because it's going to change my red. Well, let's just do it now. I'm just gonna do it just to show you. If I put that in there, you see it, my red got a little bit darker, and I don't want that all the time. You know, for this shape, it's okay, but most of the time I don't want that. So if you're going over a darker color with a lighter color, just remember to always just wash your brush out a little bit before you put it back into the paint. But this looks pretty cool actually with the red and the black mixed together. I like it. It's a dark, dark, dark red. Very cool color. All right. So you have the idea of what everything should be done. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish my painting and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So here's my finished painting. I got it a little wet here in the middle and some of that color kind of ran together, but I like it and I'm just gonna leave it like that. So these are what we call happy accidents. And 
I didn't intend for that to happen, but I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to leave it like that. If your painting is still wet, the best thing to do is just to leave it where it is. Just leave it right here and let it dry for about 10 minutes and then come back. And it should be okay after about 10 minutes. Um, the worst thing to do is to pick it up right now and kind of, you know, move it around because then all the water is going to swoosh all over your painting. But that's it for this week. I hope you had fun. I hope you made a cool, bright colored, um, interesting painting like mine. I think mine came out great. I love it. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email and I will talk to you next week. Bye.